Welcome to the John Vulcan Academy podcast, Changing Lives, where we speak to the students and facilitators of this therapeutic community to gain a deeper understanding of how the program is changing lives. Hi there, it's Gary James with the John Vulcan Academy podcast, Changing Lives. Today, featuring Russell, a student enrolled in the program here at the John Vulcan Academy in Surrey for 21 months. He's only three months from graduating. Today, Russell will tell us about getting on an airplane in Ontario and flying to British Columbia. He was at the end of his rope. Hear his story today. Russell, John Vulcan Academy. Russell is with us uh, on John Vulcan Academy podcast. Russell's a student here at uh, JBA. And great, Russell, great, great to have you with us today as we get a chance to, to know you a bit. And uh, you're not too far from graduating, I understand. No, I'm not. Um, less than four months now. Well done. You're yeah. counting down the, the yep. hours and the days? <laughs> Every day counts, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's hard for me to look at you and think of you as an addict. Uh, I get that. This program appears to have done well for you so far. Yep, it has. And how many how many months are you into the program now? Um, just about twenty one months. Twenty one months. When you first walked through the doors here at the academy, did you did you think that you'd feel like you do now at twenty one months? Uh, definitely not. Um, so when I first walked in here, I was uh, I was a completely different person. So I was the person that alcohol turned me into. Um, I was miserable. I was extremely resentful towards life, towards um, pretty much everything. Um, so, yeah, walking into these doors, um, it's actually hard to think about right now because being here, I've changed so much. Like, uh, it's kind of, it's almost like a cycle. Um, right now, I'm the person that I remember being before I started drinking. And then... Uh, yeah. Uh, when did you start drinking? I started drinking when I was um, about 16. Okay. 16, 17. Why? Uh, just for fun. Just, uh, it's just It's a social thing to do. It is a social thing to do currently and always will be. Um, so that's why it makes it a little bit trickier. And um, it, was, it took me a, quite a long time to actually realize that I was an alcoholic because I was in denial. And um, when do you think you became an alcoholic? Um, well, being here for 21 months, I've had a lot of time to think about that. And uh, I think I've rooted it down to um, when I was about 25. Okay. Yeah. When I was uh, 25, I actually spent my 25th birthday in jail. So that was um, it's kind of like a, an eye opener for sure. You never forget that birthday. I would never forget that birthday, no. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and and so we we could think about the power of uh, addiction. Um, had you tried recovery before? I did, yeah, but um, it was somewhat uh, forced upon me, so it wasn't my decision to seek family treatment. Yep, yeah, okay. I did it for other people. Okay, but and uh, when it comes down to it, you can't truly recover unless you do it for yourself. At least and that's how, what I believe today. How long was that recovery initiative? Uh, it, you graduate after 90 days. 90 days. 90, yeah. Yeah. And, and so when you heard about checking yourself in for two years, I mean, <laughs> you go, what? Is yeah. that like a really long time? Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it's, uh, it's scary. It's terrifying. Um, but today... I can say that um, two years is, is nothing compared to the rest of your life. When you first walked through these doors, who brought you here? I came here by myself. Really? Yeah. That's unusual. Yeah. So I, I flew across the country. I'm from Ontario by myself. And how did you find out about this place? My mom, she found out about it. Okay. Um, she somehow planted the seed. She told me about it. Um, Probably a month before I actually went and like Googled it. So she, and it was just, she's, she was desperate. She, caring mother, she, she's actually, um, during the whole time I was, an, like during my struggle with alcoholism, 
it's actually a really big learning process for her too because neither of us knew what recovery was or being or having an alcoholic child but um so she was constantly she went to courses and classes and stuff and um and she's always you know just uh giving me little leads and stuff on these places and uh, at first, I was just like, okay, cool. I've always wanted to go to BC. Like, might as well check it out, right? So I checked on online, and um, I mean, the name really appealed to me, the John Vulcan Academy, and the fact that they call, um, that were called students here at the Academy, it is actually really appealing to me. And, because um, I, really, I really value ed- education, uh, that's something that alcohol really took away from me. Okay. Um, I was uh, a business major in school, and um, that's when I really started drinking a little bit. Uh, it would be one of a progression to the ultimate uh, rock bottom that I experienced. But um, I was in school, and I ended up dropping out to start a job in the field. But um, I never ended up graduating. So besides high school, that was the only thing I've actually really finished in my life. Uh, after that, alcohol pretty much took everything away from me. When you think about what rock bottom looked like and what a, a day looks like now, when you get up in the morning now mm-hmm. and look ahead at the day, how, how does it compare rock bottom to a day now, 21 months into this program? Mm-hmm. It compares you, well, rock bottom, for me at least, is not getting up. Uh, is the last thing you'd want to do unless you're absolutely forced to, in which case, when you're dependent on alcohol, you're forced to get up, otherwise you're going to be sick. So it's miserable, you're sick all the time, and you truly never really experience life, or the, the days will just pass you by. And you'll miss out on everything. Meanwhile, today, getting up, <laughs> we get up at 6.30 in the morning every day. And before, that would have seemed impossible to me. But um, I, enjoy, I enjoy having a full day now. Um, and believe it or not, the time does still go by fast because I'm constantly busy. But I'm constantly doing productive things for myself, for others, and... And uh, the community as well. Tell me a little bit about your family. My family? Yeah. Yeah, my family, uh, they live on a farm in Ontario, um, 45 minutes west of Toronto. Okay. Um, we got a younger sister. She's 27. She's a registered nurse. She makes pretty good money. <laughs> and um, my brother, he's 15. So he's in grade 10 in high school. And we all have the same parents. So we're all biological, biologically related. <laughs> Um, my my dad's retired, and my mom she works for uh, the police. She answers nine one one. Okay. Yeah. When is the last time you talked to any family member? Well, now uh, the stage that I'm at in the program, I I'm allowed to email and have um, phone calls every month. So I I talk to my sister on online quite often, but I was actually really fortunate. Uh, my parents actually just came for a visit two weeks ago. Oh, tell me about that. Visit. It was awesome. It was. Uh, I was pretty nervous at first, though, because uh, it was the first time that I saw my dad since being here. So the last time he saw me was when he dropped me off at the airport, and I was I was drunk. Like I got on that plane with no sleep, and then um, flew out to BC. So the last that he remembered of me was uh, that day, and I I kind of think that. That memory of me was, that's what he had for the last 20 months in his head. So I think he was pretty surprised when he saw me now because uh, I think he kind of doubted me too. That He he wasn't sure that I'd, I'd be able to complete this program or at least get as far as I did. They must have been overwhelmed. Yeah, I, I think they were. <laughs> My mom, she, she visited me before and um, I'll never forget when she came into the store she saw me without even speaking to me. She just started crying, and my mom, she's not, she doesn't cry that often. So seeing her, 
uh, get emotional like that, it it really made me realize it's like holy crap, like it it made me realize how much this place changed me and how much I've changed being her, here. Her son was back. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And uh, when you're when you graduate, mm -hmm. uh, are you gonna head back home? I'm going back for two weeks. <laughs> yeah. You like this part of British Columbia? I love it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, my re-entry program and my plan for graduation is actually, uh, it's definitely been on my mind, but um, I finally have a solid plan right now, and I think it's pretty good. So um, I'm going to stay in BC where I have these connections, the support network that I've built over the last two years. Um, and I'm going, I've already applied to KPU University here in Surrey. Mm -hmm. and I'm just waiting back to get my offer of admission and um, I'm going to be going to school full time. Congratulations. Here. Thank you. You get to pick up on your business uh, yep. management and such. Good, yes. Good, good for you. And it's a great university. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, and so talk a little bit about these friendships you've made over the last 21 months. Yeah, for sure. How, um, how important is that? It's extremely important. The opposite of addiction is connection, and connection is something that I really had a hard time with um, up until about a quarter of the way into my program. I was uh, really reluctant to let my walls down, to be vulnerable for people to actually get to know me, um, I guess just because of fear of rejection or past uh, really unhealthy connections that I had while I was drinking. But ever since I did um, like allow for that to happen, that's like that was the starting point for the growth of the connections that I have today here. And um, it constantly changes here as well with people coming and going, either graduating or leaving, and then people coming in for the first time, walking through those doors. So everyone's at a different stage in their program, and um, where I'm at right now, I can relate to every single one, because <laughs> I was there, and I've already done it, you know. And you you had a shadow when you arrived. Yep. And you're currently a shadow. Yeah. And, and how important is that? It's very process. important. It's very important. Okay. So yeah, the shadow process is, uh, it's uh, 30 days of... 24-7, stick by your side, show some, show a new guy the ropes, pretty much. And as part of sort of the pillars here at, at the John Falcon Academy, uh, you've embraced leadership. Yeah. And you were, you are or were a council president, is that? Something? I was uh, the student council president for about four months. Four months, yeah. okay. Is that a rotation yeah. kind of program? Yeah, I think it's really important for, um, I mean, not everybody will get the chance to be the student council president just because of the amount of students that we have here. But I think it's important for many people to experience it because for me, that was uh, probably the, the most that I've grown while being here would have been in those four months. Having that responsibility and that influence on the rest of the community, um, it's, it's hard to really describe like how much you actually help people because that's when you actually see it, see the work that you do for other people. And that's kind of like what the second year of the program is designed to do. Okay. Whether you're student council president or not. And that's just by going up the leadership um, kind of levels that we have here. Um, what they really... It's uh, like you're trusted with um, other people and like your job is to help them just like how somebody helped you when you first got here. How important is it to rebuild trust? It's really important. Okay. Yeah. And, and respect? Absolutely. Okay. Very important. So part of this learning about yourself mm -hmm. is to appreciate that it's a two-way street. Yeah. And, and it, it, it must be amazing uh, in leadership to garner some respect and to gain the trust of your fellow community mm -hmm. and students. Mm -hmm. that, that must be gratifying. Yeah, it, it really is. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, you, you, you've worked in PricePro. 
Mm -hmm. because everybody does. Yeah. (laughs) I understand we got you out of the furniture department today. Yeah. Uh, What other departments have you had a chance to work in at PricePro? My PricePro life. Um, So everyone pretty much starts at the bottom in maintenance. So when I first got here, I was in the maintenance uh, department, uh, making sure the store is nice and clean. And um, I worked in grocery for a couple months, uh, stocking shelves. I actually liked that at first. Um, but uh, my strengths lie with customer service. So I worked in the front end as the cashier for a bit. And then uh, my first long-term position here was in the snack bar. So I learned how to prepare food also while developing connections with customers in the community um, through selling uh, food to them, like their lunches and their snacks and stuff like that, coffees, learn how to make specialty coffees. And I got to say that was probably one of my um, favorite positions in the store. Very good. Mm-hmm. You, you, in, in your past, uh, you, you knew how to uh, fix a problem of not feeling great. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is a what was a bottle? Mm-hmm. What do you do now? Uh, you have a rough day. How do you get out of it? How do you get through it? Today, um, one of my biggest passions that I discovered here is boxing. So we actually have a volunteer who comes in every week, and she teaches us boxing. She trains us, and uh, her name is Meg, and she she trained me from day one. I knew nothing about boxing before taking her class so and now today like I'm I'm pretty confident in my skills and I really enjoy it so on a hard day sometimes I'll go hit the bag but what's uh, even better is that I'm we're constantly surrounded with our peers here and that's the best tool that we can use is one-to-one interaction with another addict too so we're all going through the same thing but then Saying that, it's like I gotta, I gotta think of other things too for when I graduate because I'm not gonna be around them all the time. So in the reentry, like I've been slowly being introduced to AA. I'm gonna, I'm really looking forward to building connections outside of this place, like through the AA community, and um, also music. Okay. I, I play the piano. Good for you. Yeah, and music was my life before. I started drinking. Like I would, I would compete all the time. I started. I actually taught myself how to read music when I was eight years old, and um, I used to win competitions. And uh, unfortunately, like it's probably one of the saddest days of my life. But I, I ended up selling my piano so I could pay rent because I was broke because I spent all my money on alcohol. But. But now being here at the JVA, I've music kind of got it did get reintroduced into my life again. I've been practicing, I've been learning new songs, I getting my skills back. You'll have to perform at your graduation. Yeah, I've already performed here a couple times. Yeah, at a couple functions and stuff. So uh, getting over like the fear of it's not it's never really been a fear for me, but just getting up on stage in front of people and performing. Now, you, you've talked about working, uh, which is, you know, for many, a, a skill set to, to learn. You've talked about leadership. And you've talked about music, which is a personal uh, opportunity there. Uh, what other aspects of your growth have you, ha- have you had a chance to experience? Um, definitely uh, my education. So, like I said, um, I was... A university student back home, and unfortunately, I, a, a dropout. <laughs> but in the second year of the program here, um, another one of my responsibilities here is the education. So I help the other students get into whatever level of education that they um, desire to pursue while they're here at the academy, and that's all done in the second year. So I quickly, like, I, I was. Pretty familiar. I got I got re-enrolled in my school back on, in Ontario, and I started my first online course, a course in which that I failed um, about seven years ago, but that F was on my transcript, so and it's it was it was still there. I didn't withdraw from the course, and it's kind of haunting me, you know. So I took I retook the course here with a clear mind um, and dedication, determination. I was able to get eighty percent. 
Congratulations. So I got an A. And uh, that was just the start. Uh, then I took my second course. They're three months long each, and I got another 80. So I'm on my third one right now, and I'm going to get higher than an 80. That's good. my goal. Very good. And and uh, once again, you've, you've demonstrated uh, that you can help others mm-hmm. uh, through uh, almost being a, a mediator but a facilitator for those seeking education options. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the community here uh, at JVA. For sure. Um, so it's a therapeutic community. I never even knew what a therapeutic community was before coming here. But uh, to sum it up, it's we're all here for the same reason, but you're never alone. We all live together. We all eat together. We all work together. We fight with each other. We cry together. We're essentially one big giant family under one roof. <laughs> um, it's uh, it, That's actually the best word to describe it, is that we're a big family. And it, is Dad John Vulcan? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> and he's not shy around here, is he? I mean, no. He, he's very much part of yep. the campus, the academy. And, and yeah. It's, yeah. It's got it's it's to be encouraging to see the founder, the the guy with the vision, yeah, having a meal and it, and uh, is one of the guys. It's incredible, yeah. Yeah, I I tell that to everyone too. It's just like John is actually a part of this community. He he's involved. He teaches us every month. Um, he eats with us. He lives with us too. Like he lives on site here, which is incredible. Like he doesn't have to, right? But he does out of the kindness of. Of his heart, right? So you're counting down three months or so yeah. to go for graduation. You've got a re-entry plan. Mm-hmm. You've used the word plan a number of times. Yeah. Did, did you think maybe that would be part of your vocabulary? No. Two years ago, you <laughs> spent no so way. much time planning and <laughs> contemplating. And, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's another, another skill developed mm-hmm. uh, while, while here. Um. As, you, as you're as you've been reflective and and you've indicated you've had time to, to do that to think about it what do you see as the most significant uh, benefit of being in in the John Vulcan Academy for you personally for me personally um, it's funny because you first asked me about um, the two-year time length here and what I tell people like is that that's probably the most beneficial part of this program is time. Having that time to truly heal, to not only your brain, but your emotions, your body, um, mental, like that time has truly allowed me to heal and reflect and plan. And being in the academy, it allows you to do that when you don't have to worry about paying your bills, you're not you don't have any stresses, you don't have to worry about any of that. It's truly meant and designed to to like to make you heal, you know, for you to heal. Russell, somebody's uh, listening to uh, to your words um, as a student about to graduate and uh, and maybe they've been through a recovery program uh, as you had mm-hmm. short term whatever. What would your words be to somebody contemplating committing two years of their life to the John Vulcan Academy? What would you tell them? Of course. Um, so this person is thinking about coming to the John Vulcan yeah. Academy? Yeah. It's simple. I, I would just ask them, what's two years compared to the rest of your life? Excellent. Russell, thank you, and all the best in your graduation. Thank you very much. This has been the John Vulcan Academy podcast, Changing Lives. To learn more about the program or to enroll today, visit our website at vulcan.org. John Vulcan Academy, we change lives. Thanks for listening. 